Well, it's Saturday and I am finally getting around to opening up this bottle of Motul. We're gonna mix up one tank of gas, same thing as last week, 750 milliliters, 19 milliliters of oil. And, you know, <laughs> here, I'll pour it on the uh, side of the, the beaker. It's not quite as thick as a, uh, look at that. I wonder how long this stuff stays in suspension. We'll have to, uh, I'm definitely going to do that. You guys chat me up a little bit. I'll get the rest of that properly mixed here in a minute. But yeah, isn't that crazy? That's on the inside. And that whole drip just goes right there. Um, what I'll probably do is go ahead and mix up, because I've heard, and look, I'm a complete idiot when it comes to these motorcycle oils, um, that castor oil has a tendency to fall out of suspension. So what I might do today, after I get this all cleaned up, is mix up a batch of the 927 and just see how long, you know, just wrap it up and just let it sit for a few days until we actually get a chance to test uh, the next oil and uh, see how it goes. But anyway, let me get this mixed up and we'll go head over to the woodlot. I actually did such a fantastic job touching up my chain yesterday. When I reached over here to unplug the light and I pulled my arm back, it, it bit me. Just just barely even touched it. And uh, you, know, you can tell that's tugging on my callus right there. Anyway, thanks for listening to me, Yap. We're going to do some cutting, come back, tear this thing down, and uh, see if uh, the Honda is still the king of the hill or this Motul is all that in a bag of chips as well. All right, just a little quickie cut video. So it runs a little on the cooler side. Um, thought response is good, smells good. So I was running like a champ. All right, so y'all that regularly follow me, it's not like me to go an entire week or so without posting the video, but I've been the unfortunate recipient of the flu. So anyway, here's where I left off at. Uh, last Saturday, today's Friday, so I've been holding down the couch for a week. Anyway, I'm all jam up and jelly tight now. Everything's good. I have one concern. I haven't turned a screw on this. This actually stayed the back of my expedition the whole time. I just drug it out this morning. Um, the tail end of running the tank of gas out of here for the Motul 800, I started feeling some heat coming off the cylinder. Nothing crazy but it was warmer than it was when I first started running it and during the middle part of the operation. I am hoping I didn't lose any plating on the cylinder. So I've thought about this. So nothing left to do but just crack it up and see what happens. Obviously this isn't going to be anything on the Motul 800. And then if there's damage then rebuild everything. I've got yet another top end that's factory that hasn't been touched that we can throw in here and redo this test. All right, so there's all, I ran, that's every last bit of the gas out. That's what was left in the tank. So I wouldn't make a mess when I uh, pulled the carburetor. Uh, so far, everything looks okay. I can't get a clean shot of the piston. I haven't rotated it over. So, you know, got a nice looking burn in there. A little wet on the plug. I did slightly tune this. Uh, I did not change the tune from when we did 
the HP2. And this was four stroking a good bit with a nice, sharp, aggressive chain. So I did make a slight tuning adjustment. Obviously, you know, I didn't richen it up. I just got enough where, you know, your traditional tune, when you come off of the uh, full load, that uh, it quits four stroke and it cleans, or it starts four stroke and it cleans up. All right, as usual, I've done pre-assembly, but I haven't taken anything off the cylinder. Um, here, let's take a look real quick. Now nah, we'll do it all at the same time. Um, let's see, my carburetor's off. Let me crack these loose. Boy, I am so far behind. I haven't been that sick in quite some time. Uh, you know, to, to lose a week's worth of work. I mean, I guess I probably could have worked yesterday. I just didn't want to run myself into the ground. Uh, I guess I'll take these loose. Come on. Yeah, that impact's nice. It doesn't have a ton of torque, which is good. Uh, all right, where are we at? Boot torn loose. Man, I hope this cylinder's okay. Tight fit. Come on. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Gotcha. All right. Ooh, almost lost that one behind the bench. All right. I'm not even looking. Let's look at it together. Uh, yes, yeah, so we already, I think we already looked at the spark plug. Maybe, no, we didn't. So, a little dark there. It needs some more light on it. It's not that, when I look at it, there we go. With a little bit of light on it, that looks more like it. You don't have that shading. So, good tune, good burn. Oil film on the piston is decent. Uh, absolutely no carbon to speak of. Um, I can see, let me wipe off that. Got a little pooling right there like we should with any good 40 to one ratio. Probably have to flip this forward. See how the insect ties this piston skirt, piston skirt looks. Okay, that's a great indication right there of what we're gonna see in the bottom end. Why this was starting to warm up a little bit, I don't know. But it doesn't look like anything's hurt right there. God, I hate the way that looks. Uh, you know, that's the thing about using these old, you know, this is a D-shaped cylinder. So this is an early, this is an 046 cylinder, which would have been proper for this. The only crappy part is, is that, you know, who knows how much runtime was on this cylinder before I got it. You know, when I cleaned it up, it was just, you know, nobody had gone in there and tried to remove any transfer. All I had to do was remove the dent in the, uh, the intake roof. So, Eh, all right, sorry. We'll show you around a little bit more. I'm just, I'm just nervous, man. Uh, look down in there. I mean, look, everything's got a beautiful sheen to it. Um, you know, there's more dye in the HP2, and the HP2 is a little thicker, but I mean, that's, there's nothing to sneeze at right there. That's a, uh, Again, you're just not going to see this kind of 
results from a lubrication standpoint. And also, you know, you know, with with our manufacturers, you know, Steel Husky Echo Oil, it just doesn't do that good. Doesn't I mean there's nothing wrong with it. This is just better. Um, I'm gonna take a little deeper look at this uh cylinder to see if there's anything really going on. All right, so here's what I think I'm gonna do. I think we're gonna retire my beater firewood saw with a, you know, wore out cylinder. You know, I'm gonna get skewed results if I continue to use this. I've got an MS-400 that I put together from two saws and both of those saws failed for different reasons, but it the whole saw's got like maybe, I don't know, 25 or 30 hours on it we can plug it in i'll do a tear down uh the piston was a little discolored from whatever cheap oil was running the one that had a good top end but anyway that's a good known when there's performance work that's been done to it so uh we'll use that as a test mule but again you know this is just not what you'll see you, know, you look at come on focus But you see how the, you just don't get that from our OPE oils. So, again, I can't say anything bad about this. For 20 bucks for a, a liter of oil, you know, if you're using, you know, if you're mixing gas a few times a year, hell, I would ditch the manufacturer's oils and start running something good and save you a few bucks. Um, you know, obviously this is about another half more. Um, how about we do some H1R next and, uh, I'm going to get this clean back up and just use this as my firewood. saw. but again, you know, look how nice that looks, you know, everything's, I mean, I'm, I'm a hundred percent sold on this now. I've been beating my head against the wall trying to find the best chainsaw oil for a chainsaw. I should have just started this this direction to begin with. Anyway, y'all discuss in the comments and let me know what you think. Thank you for watching.